Good morning, campers. <laughs> All right, so um, we are going to talk about local SEO, local search engine optimization. How many of you were in uh, Leah's talk in the, in the uh, All Users session just a few minutes ago? Okay, so you kind of got a good grounding in some uh, basic SEO there. Local SEO is a little different flavor, and we're going to talk about how that differs. Um, so this is me, Rich Owings. I'm a local here in Asheville. I've got a resource list on my site that actually goes into a little more detail than what we're going to be able to get into today. Um, it's localiswhereitsat.com slash local dash SEO dash resources. And I'll have this up again at the end of the program. I also have a reminder to say, ask questions as we go along. I may say, we'll get to that in a few minutes, but I will try to address all your questions. And I think we'll have time for that. If, if it looks like we're going to run out of time, I may, I may have to shut it down. But I think we'll be OK there. So what is local search? This is just when someone searches to find products or services in their area. They may be looking for a grill. They may be looking for a cast iron pan. They could be looking for anything. They could be looking for an electrician, a plumber, a hairdresser, a web developer. So a lot of different things. Um, the most accurate figures I've seen say that about 20% of all search has local intent and that that number goes to 30% for mobile searches from cell phones. So 20% of all internet searches, this is a huge number of searches and it's something that we cannot afford to ignore. So just to get us all on the same page here about some of the terms, this is a, a basic search results page and this is from Atlanta. I try to use things somewhat out of the area. But these are paid ads through the Google AdWords program. This is an organic result based on a lot of things, the search term, the title tag, the domain authority, uh, links pointing back to it, many, many things. And then we have the map pack here. Uh, in this case, we can call it a seven pack. There's seven results, and they are keyed to locations on the map up here. Now, local SEO impacts how you appear both in organic results and in map-based results. And I will point out that the first one or two map-based results usually perform very well in organic results, too. Oh, there's the map. We also see things like this now, a three-pack. Some people call it the snack pack. And if you're searching for something where there's not many providers or only one or two providers, you may even see a one-pack come up with map results. Yes? I think, should we wait till the end or just... Like, no, you can... Okay, I've never seen the three pack before. Um, any idea of how, like, or what on Google or whatnot that might be contributing to, I mean, getting in that three pack or what, how it is? You'd, you'd have to be in the top three in map results to be in the three pack. Uh, yeah, the top three results, um, but I'm not in the, the map pack. Right. Google did an update almost exactly a year ago. Uh, wait, what is today? It was, it was July 24th last year, um, the Pigeon update. And since then, it is much harder to appear on the front page for organic and map results. It used to be a little easier to do that. So it may be very difficult to do at this point. But um, yeah, and I don't know how much more we're going to see the three pack. Uh, it seems to be something they like to share with mobile results, and they're going to more consistency between mobile results and desktop results. So. I don't know if that really answers it, but sure. okay. All right, sure. Um, so who benefits from local SEO? Three different types of businesses, or two in a subset, but uh, brick and mortar stores. So if you have a presence where people come to you and you have regular hours where they come to you, and it could be a retail store, it could be a hair salon, it could be, um, it could be an attorney's office, it could be anything where you have a physical presence and people come to you. Service area businesses, home builders, uh, electricians, solar installers, countertop installers, web developers, consultants, 
A lot of people fall in this category where people don't come to you, but you provide services to them. Sometimes you go to their residents to provide services, and sometimes you're doing these things remotely. And kind of a subset of that is home-based businesses because local SEO can really help home-based businesses. And I imagine that you know we have some web developers and folks in the crowd who work from home. My office is in the basement of my home. Um, so it can help you as well. And we're going to talk about the implications of that as we go along too. Now we typically think of five components for local SEO. There's your Google Plus or Google Business page, and you'll hear me use those terms interchangeably. Citations, which I will define momentarily. Links to your site, reviews, and then things you can do on site, on your WordPress site, to help with local SEO. As you can see, four of these are about things that happen off your website. So there are a lot of things you can do off site to impact how you rank locally. Now, I'm going to go through each of these five components. I will define them and give you some tips on how you can improve your local search presence through each of these. And then talk a little bit about how uh, these tie into WordPress for each of these five components and how it ties into your website. So the first one is your Google Business page. Now, this is also known as Google Plus Local. And if you're logged in to where you manage your Google business page, it's the Google My Business dashboard. And you can do that at google.com slash business. You can go there to set up a Google business page or to see if Google already has one for you. You may not have done anything to set it up and they may still already have one there for you just through information they've discovered other places online. Once you do that, they're going to ask you to choose a business type. Am I holding this about the right distance? Can y'all hear me? Okay. Yep. All right. Great. They're going to ask you to choose a business type. I urge you to choose store, uh, storefront or service area. If you choose brand, and you may have reasons for doing that, you may have a band, you may have a national company, you know, Coca-Cola would want to have a brand page. But if you want to rank locally, you need to be one of these first two. If you want to rank in the map pack because brand pages do not rank in local results. So figure out which category you fall into. Um, again, I'm trying to show examples of pages from outside the area here. This is what a Google business page looks like. There's a lot of information that once you go in and get control of that page, and we'll talk about how to do that, you can change here. Um, you can change the category, the hours, you can improve the description, you can add photos. And this gives you a lot of control over your search presence because when somebody does a search for your brand, for the name of your company, or if they go to a map result and highlight it, then this pops up on the right side. We call this the, the knowledge panel, panel or the knowledge graph. And all this information, let's see if I've got a, yep. All this information here, the category, the description, address, phone number, hours of operation, that all comes from your Google business page. Uh, the photos come from, from your Google business page. So you have control over all this information. And so you can really take charge of how you appear in Google search results here. It also gives you a dramatically improved mobile presence. Now, as soon as you set up a Google business page and you search for your business name, you're probably going to see this kind of result. Uh, click to call, click for directions, click to go to the website. You may have an older WordPress site and you haven't gotten around to uh, changing to a mobile optimized theme, a mobile responsive theme, which I urge you to do if you haven't done that. But this will instantly give you an improved mobile presence even without doing that because this is what's going to come up first when people search for you. Now some tips about uh, your Google business page. You want to go in and claim it at google.com slash business. And then you want to verify ownership. Now Google wants you to verify ownership to be sure that you are the business owner so nobody else can get a hold of your page and trash it. Um, there are a couple ways that they'll do this. One is through an automated phone call to your primary business phone number where they'll give you a PIN code and you'll enter it here at google.com business. 
The other way is through a postcard uh, that they'll send you with that pin code. Now they will, they've got an algorithm that decides which of these to do. And that may be based upon, you know, they don't tell us what it's based upon, but I'm guessing past history of the business phone number, past history of the address, has it been used for another business, things like that. If they give you a choice, do the phone call because it's instant. You're verified instantly. Once you've verified your listing, and only once you've verified your listing, go in and start making changes. Because if you, if you start this process to claim your business and you say, they, let's say they only give you the choice of verifying by mail, um, and they, it generates a pin code that they're gonna send out, and you go in and start changing things on your Google business page, it invalidates that pin, and you have to start the whole process over again. So don't make changes until you've verified ownership. Then you wanna fill in your profile, all the fields, everything they give you. They're gonna give you the ability to upload photos, do all those things. A more complete profile is a better profile. You wanna choose one business category, two at the most. They will let you choose more than that, but um, you may have a store that is a men's clothing store, a women's clothing store, a children's clothing store, a shoe store, but there's probably an overall general category of clothing store, and I'm seeing evidence that choosing multiple categories dilutes your ranking power. So one category, two at the most. Don't keyword stuff in your description. Don't repeat plumbers, plumbing supplies, plumbing repairs, plumbing fixtures over and over and over again. Don't say Asheville, Asheville, Asheville over and over and over again in your business description. I don't like to see uh, your main service or the city you're in used more than once or twice in a business description. They will ding you for that. It will hurt you. Also, if you have multiple locations, let's say you have three pizza restaurants around the county, you need to have a separate Google Plus page for each location. Um, these are tied to individual locations. And you can hide your address if you're a home-based business. So let's talk about that. When you go in and go through this process um, and you say you're a service area business, this box is going to come up. And unless you have operating hours um, at your location, at your home, where routine hours where people can come to you and most home-based businesses don't want that, then you want to uncheck this box. That will hide your address. It will not hurt you in rankings. This is a very competitive search for Atlanta plumbers. Notice the first six listings in the map pack don't have an address associated with them. It's a pretty good example of how it will not hurt your, your rankings here. Um, the seventh one does have an address, and you'll notice there's a different symbol here, and it's up there on the map, and it shows their exact location. Those other bubbles kind of show a general location around town, but they're not gonna show you know, exactly where your home is. So what can you do on your website to help with this? You can put your name, address, phone number, and text. Um, this is a very important concept, name, address, phone number, so there's an acronym associated with it, and you're gonna see it over and over again this morning. NAP, it doesn't mean it's time to go to sleep. It's very comfortable back there on the couches, I bet, but uh, please stay with me. Um, but you wanna have this information in text. I see a lot of business websites that are beautifully designed. They have a wonderful header with their business name in it. Uh, they've got their phone number up there high. That's great, it's wonderful. But it's all part of a graphic. And if you right click and go to view page source, sometimes you find that you can't see their business name, their business address, their business phone number anywhere in text because it's in a graphic. I actually saw a website recently from a prospective client where there was no text on the page. Everything was in a graphic on their home page. That was, that was scary. If, if you can't see that in the code, Google can't see it either. So you want Google to be able to tie those things together, your Google business page, your website, and you want to see that name, address, phone number in text on your website so Google can see it too. Rich, quick question for home-based business. Yes. Again, you don't want to necessarily give your home address. Right. What's, what's the alternative? Do you need to put the address part of the map? Or is the PO box sufficient? 
No, don't use a PO box. You have to use a real street address. Just uncheck that box that says you serve customers at your business location and they will hide your address. Specifically to the map information on your website? I would leave the address off on the website. I would probably put um, your business name, city, zip code, phone number, but just leave the address off. Yes. So you. Google wants to see a real street address, and um, if they see you using a post office box, they may not show you at all, or they may just ding you a little bit in the search results. And that's, that's PO box, UPS store kind of anything. Exactly. Yep. And it may work for some businesses, but they have cracked down on that in the past, and I've seen things like that. I've actually seen a time where they cracked down on people not hiding their home address. Um, and it hurt them in the rankings for about six months. Uh, they just basically disappeared from rankings for six months. So you want to follow their rules. UPS store might be okay because it just shows the street address and sweep. Now, you used to see like PMV, like personal mailbox or something, but now it just says sweep 102. And, and so. Google knows where those are. And, you know, they may have like 20 business listings with the same address there. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wouldn't do it. I would avoid it, especially on your Google business page. You might want to do it elsewhere. You might, you know, do it on your website and all. And I think that's, that's not so bad. Don't do it on your Google business page. Sarah. I think uh, it's fine for it to be in the footer or in the sidebar. You do want prominent contact information for conversion reasons, but otherwise and it's... And you have a graphic of their contact information up in the top header. It's just the text-based part goes below the fold, and so that expert tried to say that was causing us a problem. So anyway. No, it's fine. Yes? Steffi? Yes. <laughs> I can't quite see from up here, see who's out there. Hey, Steffi. <laughs> Google knows you're close to Asheville. Um, I don't think it's going to really hurt you that much to do that. And since the, um, since the Pigeon update, they're actually showing more hyper-local results. So you may be more likely to rank for a search that somebody conducts from inside the city limits of Asheville on the east side than uh, for a business that's actually inside the city limits on the west side. So I don't think it's, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, however, I would be mentioning Asheville in your homepage text and some things like that, saying you serve the greater Asheville area, something of that sort. Yeah. Yes? Sorry, last question on this topic for a minute is, um, if one has a Google Plus page at address A, okay, it's a PO box, it's a UPS box, whatever, one moves, one moves their business to address B, do you lose, like, your, um, you know, your, your comments and your reviews and all that good stuff, or is that seamlessly transition from your one it, it usually will transition. You may have to work with Google Local Support to get that done, but you can just go in and change your address. Sometimes they'll create an entirely new Google Plus page for you. Um, a lot of times it depends upon how far the move is. So that's kind of a case-by-case -case situation. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on here. Um, another part of the phone number is that you need to have a local area code if you're trying to rank for Asheville. Uh, don't have your old 704 or whatever area code um, as your primary business number. You need to have local area code. That's a very strong signal to Google that you are indeed a local business. You want to have your city, state, business name, and main service in your title tag. Now, your business name may include the main service in it. If your business name is Asheville Plumbers, then you don't need to repeat plumbers again. Um, but it's good to have these um, in the title tag. It's just a strong signal to Google about what your page is about and where you're located, what your business is about. Now your title tag appears in a couple places. It appears in search results. It also appears up here um, on a browser tab. Now in this case, 
I think they're missing a real opportunity here. I would say their title tag should be something like Ballast Point Brewing San Diego, California, so that they actually had what they do in the, in the title tag and they have their location. And these are the kind of things that definitely impact your rankings. That one thing may not be enough to move them from spot number three to spot number two or something, but all these things taken together definitely have a positive impact on your rankings. So the next component is citations. Y yes? Uh, before you move on, um, should you spell out the state or use the abbreviation? Abbreviation's fine. So we will know that. Absolutely. I don't think it really matters that much. Um, I try to follow a convention and do that where I have room to do it. So citations are mentions of your business name, address, phone number, a recurring theme today, um, on sites like yellowpages.com, Yelp, even Facebook. Just like with your Google business page, you want to go in and claim these listings. If you go to your Yelp listing and scroll down, somewhere down there it's going to say, are you the business owner? Claim this page. Um, you know, Facebook has a thing like this in the menu for business pages. So you want to claim those pages. You want to be sure that your name, address, phone number is consistent across all these listings. Um, especially the address and phone number. I wouldn't worry if you're Joe's Pizza in one place and Joe's Pizza LLC in another place. Google can parse those things. They, they know they're the same business. Address and phone numbers, critically important. Let's say you moved a few years ago and you have these citations. There can be dozens of these listings online. Let's say you've got a dozen mentions of your old address online and a dozen mentions of your new address online. Are you going to rank well in Google? Probably not because they don't want to take a chance of sending someone to a place that's no longer there, that's moved or is no longer in business. So consistency of name, address, phone number across all these things, your Google business page, the citation listings, having it in text on your website, these are all very important factors. And let me say one more thing about that. Um, minor variations, you know, ST versus street, don't worry about that, that's fine. Um, like I say, Google can parse those things. Fill these out thoroughly, completely. If they offer you a place to add a description, upload photos, uh, links to your social media accounts, fill in all those things. Now, in addition to some of those that I mentioned, yellowpages.com, Yelp, things like that, there are also informal citations. And so here we're thinking about, these others are kind of structured directories. Here we're thinking about things like uh, newspapers, local blogs, things of that sort. You know, they will, if you're a restaurant that's opening up in town, you know, it's, they'll do an article saying, you know, here's your name, address, phone number, and they'll do an article on you. And even if they just mention your name, even without the address and phone number, that can, that can help. So informal citations help. As a matter of fact, apart from a few major national directories, and I say directories, citation sites, we don't really think of Facebook as a directory, but say major national sites. So Facebook, Yelp, yellowpages.com, apart from a few of these, local listings are much more important than any of these other ones. So if you can get a listing from the Asheville Citizen Times or Ash Vegas or another local blogger, those are really good, or a local nonprofit, something like that. After that, niche citations are most, most important. There are directories out there for architects and mechanics, anything you can think of. And on my resource page on the site, uh, and I'll show that URL again at the end of the program, I've got some resources there where you can dig through and find some of those specialized directories. And then these other national pages. You know, there may be. A lot of these directories that you've never heard of, you know, yellowbot.com and things like that, and they're not as important except if you have name, address, phone number errors, and then I'd try to go in and correct those. All right, I, I wanted to mention this, um, Facebook. Um, Facebook's really important to be on, and here's why. A lot of people spend a lot of time on Facebook, and you see that search bar there? One quarter of all local search happens directly on Facebook. 
People don't go to Google. They'll go there, they'll type in plumber, house painter, whatever. Um, one quarter of all local search. So if you're not on Facebook with an active business page, you're missing a big opportunity there. Facebook is also the second most used mobile app for local search after Google Maps. All right, own your website, what can you do? Again, have your name, address, phone number, and text. We want to see these across these different places. Citations, Google Plus page, your website, name, address, phone number, and text consistently across them with the same address, same phone number. All right, moving on to reviews. Reviews are kind of the new currency of the web. They are very important. Uh, here's a search for attorneys in Charleston. If you were searching for an attorney in Charleston, which of these results draws your eye? Which ones would you click on? Okay, all right. So these star ratings here, these star icons, really draw your eye. That number there is very important. You can see which firms people like more than others. So I've got two points here, and I'll come back to that slide to explain them. One is that you need to ask for reviews. And the other is that there's a magic number involved, five. So let me tell you what I mean by those. You see these here, 35 Google reviews, 17 Google reviews. That is not happening serendipitously. They are asking people for reviews. You don't get that many reviews unless you're proactively asking people for reviews. Somewhere in their process with their clients, they've got it baked into the process where they ask them to review them on Google. That may be every client. It may be ones that they've decided are happy clients at the conclusion of a case or something. But uh, this is something they're doing, and you need to bake it into your process. Somewhere along the way, you've got to figure out if you're going to ask every customer or client, just the happy ones, where in the process you're going to do it. The other thing I wanted to say is five is the magic number. So we see here one Google review, two, four, with no stars. Once you get to five, five reviews, you'll get those star icons showing up. So I see a number of businesses in the situation of this last one here with four reviews. I've, I've actually seen many, many businesses that have four or five star reviews. And before, before we do anything else, I say, go out there and get that fifth review. Beat the bushes, you know, find a happy customer or past client, somebody, get somebody else to review you. Because then you get the stars there, it draws your eye, and I can assure you that it dramatically increases the click-through rate of you know, what, what you're going to get there. Um, somebody would see the stars and maybe they don't want to go with a larger firm, but they see somebody else that's a little smaller, they have, uh, they have five stars there. It makes a huge, huge difference in the number of clicks that you're going to get in these results. So what can you do on your website for reviews? I like to see sites have a page on their domain dedicated to reviews. Uh, yourdomain.com slash reviews. And that can be a place where you show testimonials, you can give links to places where people can re review you online, places for people to see reviews. And this way, if somebody searches for your business name and the word reviews, you're probably going to show up on the front page of Google. There's a Google Places review plugin, and it will highlight your recent reviews, it's got some different options here. You can plug that onto the page or in the sidebar. There's also, this is my one local slide, so I blacked them out, that's a client of mine. But um, there's a TripAdvisor widget that you can get code for and just drop into your site. Same thing with Yelp. So these are great ways to highlight reviews on your site. All right, next up is links. And this is just people linking from their domain to your domain. We could talk all day long about link building and um, how you approach it. And we could, do, we could do the entire word camp on that with different speakers because there's many different approaches. But I just want to give you some ideas about building links locally, some things that may help you out for local businesses. Do you offer discounts? 
you offer senior discounts, veteran discounts, student discounts, there are sites that will list these for you. You just submit it and tell them you offer these discounts. Um, if you offer a discount for college students, then I would let your local colleges and universities know about that. They may have a page on their website where they list businesses that do this. And then you've got a .edu link. And any of you who know anything about SEO, you probably know that .edu links and .gov links are some of the most valuable ones you can get. Alumni associations will often let you link to your business. Sometimes these are .edu links. Meetup groups. I don't know of a, another city the size of Asheville in the country that has more meetup groups than we do. There are meetup groups for anything and everything. And if you're not involved in the WordPress meetup group, please uh, start coming to that. We're, uh, we meet on the third Wednesday of each month, uh, currently at Mojo Coworking. So why do I have meetup groups here? Um, meetup groups will allow you many will allow you to sponsor them. Sponsorships can be cheap. They can be like 10 bucks a month or something like that. So if there's a meetup group related to your type of business uh, that doesn't have a sponsor, consider sponsoring a meetup group. Meetup.com has a high domain authority. Uh, and getting a link from meetup.com is gonna be really good for you, especially if it's related to you. So if you are a yoga studio, then, you know, I guarantee you there are many yoga meetup groups in Asheville and somebody out there doesn't have a sponsor. So figure out a way, you know, approach them about sponsoring them and then get a link. You'll get a link from meetup.com back to your site. So you, there you have something from high domain authority. It's very relevant to your type of business and it is also relevant to Asheville. Partners and suppliers. This is another good place to get a link, and a lot of times this will be um, very closely associated with your business. This is especially good for people who have B2B partners or B2B suppliers, business to business, because they often have a really hard time getting testimonials and reviews. So if you have somebody like this, a, a supplier, you might just research, find out who their director of marketing is, write up a one or two sentence testimonial, you know, put your name there, a link to your domain, and send it to them. They may very well put it on their website, and then you may have a link coming in from something very relevant to your industry, and maybe something that's got high domain authority in itself. Nonprofits, do you support nonprofits, charities, fundraisers? A lot of these will link to you. So the next time a nonprofit asks you to support them, you might want to ask them if they link back to the businesses that support them. Um, I came across one story recently on some um, SEO blog about a chiropractor, kind of a sports chiropractor, and he supports um, every running event in his town. Everyone, you know, marathons, half marathons, 5Ks, 10Ks, um, and he ranks very well because of that. He's got all these very relevant links coming back to him. Chamber of Commerce and Better Business Bureau, these can be valuable links. They're a little tricky for a couple of reasons. One, they can run you several hundred dollars, and there may be other reasons to do these uh, in addition to just getting a link from them. But if you're gonna do this for the link, I'd be careful. What you want to do is you want to go to those sites, go to their website, and see if you can drill down through links and get to business listings. So look for healthcare, dentist, uh, something like that, and see if you can see the listing of dentists with links to their sites. Um, if you can, that's great. That means Google can crawl those links and discover all those links too. If, you ha if the only way to reach those things is to plug the category into a search box, Google's not going to do that. That means Google is not going to be able to see those links, and it is not worth the $300. Like I say, there may be other reasons to do it, but um, if you're doing it for the link, keep that in mind. Outreach. Um, it's great to have relationships with local newspaper people, bloggers, folks like that. If you have something newsworthy, reach out to them, send it out to them. Um, those are great links. Local links are great to have. On your website, what can you do for links? Great content, it's the best way to get links. Produce really great content. Share your knowledge. Every business person, whatever field you are in, you know the little tips and tricks for your field. You know the things that you know most people don't. 
So these are great things to be sharing with your audience. It's also great to have a blog, and I'm going to talk about that a little more in the next section here. Because the next section is what you can do on site, on your own website, apart from these other things. And we've talked about how these other things tie into your website. So in addition to all the other things you do for SEO, focusing on keywords, content, etc., there are other things you can do. Again, city, state, business name, and main service in your title tag. Have the name, address, phone number, and text, and have it on every page. So the footer is a great place to do this, or the sidebar, someplace like that. It doesn't have to be prominent. You do want to have your phone number, uh, contact form, something like that prominent. So uh, just for conversion purposes, people being able to reach you, but for the search engines to be able to crawl it, you want to have this on every page and it's fine to put it in the footer. Have a single domain. I see a lot of businesses, too many businesses, that have a domain for this part of their business, a domain for that part of their business. They've got a separate Blogspot blog they started years ago. You want to have all links, anybody linking to you, pointing to one domain uh, to build that domain authority for you. You're just, you're diluting your Google juice otherwise. That's a, that's a technical term. <laughs> All right, prominent contact information. It's great to see that phone number uh, high up there on the, in the header. Clickable phone number. If uh, somebody's looking at your site on mobile, you want to be sure they can click that phone number. Have the hours of operation on your site. Google likes to see that. Useful information, FAQs. You know the questions you get over and over and over again. If people are asking you those things, they are looking for them online as well. So it's great to have a good FAQ section. You also need to have a location page unless you're a home-based business. You want to have an embedded Google Map, and you can just go to Google Maps and search for your business name. Um, and hit the menu button and then there's like a place where you can grab the embed code and you just drop that onto your site. Yes? Does that have to be a separate page or is it, can it be on your contact page? Should it say location? Um, that's a good question. I think I'd probably prefer to see separate pages for those things, but I don't know if there's really a, that, that's just my gut reaction. I don't know if there's a valid, you know, reason for that. I don't know of any empirical evidence I can point you to on that one. Um, but location pages are important. And one reason I say that is because there's a lot of other information to put there. And before I leave the Google Map and talk about the other things, there are two ways to grab a Google Map for your site. You can go to Google Maps and you can search for your address and embed that map. Or you can search for your business name and embed that map. You want to do the latter. You want to search for your business name, not the address. It's just another way to tie your business to a certain location in Google's eyes. And, and so, sorry, this is on kind of a beginner, so this will like actually put the, the physical Google map on your website? It will, absolutely. Which, which some people might argue kind of destroys the aesthetics, or not, it might look nice. I think it's fine on a location page. It's something I expect to see on location pages. And, I yeah. On yeah. Okay. Right. Um, Include directions to your business, maybe from different, different areas of town, and text about location. And directions are a great way to do this. Any text you can include about your location is very helpful. Just kind of working in some local keywords helps. And Google, after the Pigeon update last summer, they're really focusing on hyperlocal. So you may be more likely to rank for a certain part of town than all across town. If you search now for restaurants on Google, a year ago, a little over a year ago, you would have seen maybe the top restaurants in town. If you do it today, you'll probably see restaurants in your part of town. Um, so including text about your location is a great thing to do, and it's good for directions. So you could say, take the Biltmore exit on I-40, uh, go south on Hendersonville Road for a mile and a half. If you reach the Blue Ridge Parkway, you've gone too far. Look at those location keywords you've incorporated in that just by having text, having directions there on your website. It's a good thing to do. 
Mobile. Um, you need to have a mobile optimized website. If you don't, then you need to look into switching themes and uh, making sure you have something that's uh, mobile responsive or mobile optimized in some way. We are really in a mobile first environment now. Over 50% of all organic search now happens on these, on phones. So if you have not searched for your business name, your business category, your keywords, your competitors on an iPhone, on an Android phone, and on an iPad, go do it. You might be really surprised at what you find. Now, when you do this on a phone, you want to see this label here, mobile friendly, right after your URL. This won't show up if you do it on desktop, only if you do it on your phone. Um, that lets you know that Google considers that you have a mobile friendly site. They've got a mobile friendly testing tool that I link to in the resource list, but you definitely want to see this. If you don't see this, then there's a good possibility that you're getting dinged in mobile search results. You're not ranking as high in mobile as you do on desktop. It will not impact your desktop search results, but it will impact your mobile. Uh, no discussion of SEO and WordPress would be complete without talking about blogging. Google likes deep sites with lots of content. They want to see things that are continually updated, and a blog is a great way to do that. If you do a new blog post a week, every week of the year, after a year, you've got 52 new blog posts, 52 new ways to show up in Google's index, 52 new ways for people to find you on search. It is a good thing to do. Blogging gives you user interaction signals from things like comments. Uh, Google can see you know, how many people are commenting. They can see shares and things of that sort. Anybody who's been blogging for any length of time is going to attract some external links. I mean, unless you just got a spammy blog out there. If you're writing good content, you're going to see links coming back to you. And I can't really explain you know, how that happens, but I, I don't think I've ever seen a good blog where people are doing a good job with it, and they've got a few dozen posts up without somebody linking to it. This gives you a way to latch onto stories in the news. There may be things related to your industry um, that you can talk about. Um, Jane, there, there's like a canine virus going around now or something, so canine flu. So yeah, there's a great thing to be, be writing about. It just gives you a way to tag on to these things and discuss them and let your clientele, let your audience know about them uh, or give your unique perspective on them. And a lot of times business people know they need to be active on social media, but they don't quite know what to post to social media. So this is another thing you can do. Here's my blog post on canine flu. So those are the five components of um, local SEO, your Google business page, citations, links, reviews, additional things you can do on your own website. This is where you can find me. My Twitter feed, I tend to, I don't post a lot, just a few times a week, but I tend to kind of curate SEO and local SEO news, and it's a way for me to keep my clients updated on changes, um, things that happen in local SEO where they're just things they need to be aware of. There's the resource list, and there's my reminder to put some business cards out here. Um, <laughs> Do y'all have any questions? Yes? Um, this has been very informative. Uh, how well does a lot of this map on to Yahoo and Bing and you know, the other whatever 20%? Very, very well. It, it does very well. Um, there is a Bing places where you can, it's kind of like Google business pages, so you can put your business there. Uh, Yahoo seems to be kind of abdicating on local search and they're they're getting out of it or just uh, serving Yelp results and things like that these days. But all these things will, you know, they should help you in ranking across all these search engines locally. Other questions? Oh, stunned silence. I don't know if that's good or bad. Yes? Uh, right. Yeah. 
you can, so there's two different Google business pages? They were, one was generated automatically. Right, so yeah. Showing the old address. Yeah. Um, you can, it's, it's tricky, <laughs> and it doesn't always work. Sometimes it's a royal pain to do it. I mean, I've been in touch with Google support many, many times about these things, and sometimes it takes like a half dozen calls or something, but you can contact Google local support about it. There's actually, you can actually reach and talk to somebody at Google. Sometimes it's not a Native American speaker, but um, you can contact them. There's a, if you log into the Google My Business dashboard, there's a place there where it says contact us and you can just kind of go through that. There are certain hours that they're available, but probably the best thing to do is talk to them. Okay. Yeah. Yes. In the beginning, you had the, whether it's a brand or storefront or I forget the other one, uh, claim what you say you are. Yes. So if you say that you're a storefront, do you have to actually have a storefront? Yes. Yes, well it can be, you know, if you have a home-based business and you maintain an office there and you say people can come to visit you between 9 to 5, you can include that. Okay. Yeah. As long as you have some kind of physical office that's accessible to people coming to you during specific business hours, you can say you're a storefront. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure. Other questions? Yes. I, building, if your store is in a building and it's one of many at that same address and you don't have a separate like dash A or a written number or anything, does that make a difference if other places are listed in the same location? Google can generally figure those things out. I do see plenty of examples where they show multiple businesses at a single address. It's better to have a suite number if you can, but I see plenty of examples where they get it right and they figure it out. Um, you might just search for your business and the other people in the building and just see what's happening there. Anything else? Yes. Right. But you do a lot of work in Raleigh. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. City landing pages are really difficult. It's really difficult to rank for, you know, Rock Masonry Raleigh if you're based in Asheville. So here's what I'd suggest. Pick um, your best opportunity. That may be the one that you feel is the larger market or the one that you feel is easiest to rank for and start working on a location page for that. So, uh, you know, wh whatever slash Raleigh on your website. And then you want to make it unique. You want to make it helpful. You could show examples of projects you've done, YouTube videos of projects you've done uh, in Raleigh, but it needs to be needs to be unique. It needs to give people value. You could offer a discount or some kind of special offer for people in Raleigh and then share that on social media. Um, but those landing pages need to be detailed. They need to be unique. They can be, here's our favorite lunch places when we're in Raleigh. You know, it can be, it can be anything like that, our favorite parks. It could be, here's a certain kind of stone that we like to work with in Raleigh because it's easier to find there and we can't get this in the mountains. Um, work on that make it unique, just keep plugging away at that page, doing whatever you have to do until you can get it to rank. Once you can get it to rank, then you can rinse and repeat with other cities. Um, but again, you can't just swap out Raleigh for Charlotte and expect it to rank. Those pages have to be unique, they have to be helpful to the local audience. And you're talking about putting those on your main website? Yes. Yeah, and don't make, up, don't, make up a, don't make up a Raleigh address and have a Google business page for it. You don't want to do that. Yes. You could, you could do that. Yeah, I'd probably use tags for that, but yes, yeah, you could certainly do that. And have examples of each project, and then you could link to those from that one location page. Yeah, that's a great thing to do. So if you've got a, a roofing company in Atlanta, you've got all these different cities, I mean, Atlanta Metro, mm -hmm. you cover the whole area, you know, Marietta and Kennesaw and, and Alpharetta, are you suggesting yep. creating separate? relevant landing pages for each one at a time 
do a really thorough job on it. And you know, once you get that one run, ranking and you kind of hit on the formula, then you can go back and do some others. But you know, pick the best target market for you. Like I say, it may be, it may be a smaller city that you think is easier to rank for. You may want to tackle the biggest one you know, if you're really optimistic about it and aggressive. But, but all that putting all those zip codes and cities and stuff, stuffing them down is yeah. no. No, don't do that. <laughs> Absolutely don't do that. Yeah, and don't do that on your Google business page, in your description. Uh, just say serving the greater Atlanta, Atlanta metropolitan area. So. More questions? Anybody? Okay. Uh, are we close to the lunch time? Okay. So, um, what time is it now? I can't quite see that. Okay, so lunch is at 12.15. Um, you want to be sure you have your badge and show it to them as you go in. That's all you need to do. There are a lot of different stations around there, so you can go to any of them. They have like a hot bar, they have a salad bar, etc. cetera. Um, I will be in the happiness bar right out here immediately after lunch. So if y'all have some other questions you want to address or if you want help with a specific issue, I'd be glad to try to help and take a look at those. Thank you.